I was so excited by your courage. Hmm. That's what I walked away with. I thought, wow, Q was fully himself. Hmm. That's what I walked away with. And, I, and I'm so grateful. You know, as, as people, we need to do that as artists, as black people, as black artists. And I was really, really glad. And I feel like what I saw was a lot of ways in and you figuring out for yourself and along with the dancers, how do I help an artist excavate themselves? Mm. You know, from the work that you did, a lot of games and strategies and tools that I think we are often encouraged to invisibilize in mm. our craft and you really made them visible. Mm. And I don't think there was pressure actually at all in this particular lab, but still we're never immune from the bigger societal pressure. Right. And we're always right. in the bigger societal pressure, which says produce, 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 product, product, you know, capitalism. Right. So I really appreciated that you took time to show the, like the seams, do you mm -hmm. know what I mean? And to mm -hmm. say, actually I've been excavating my process and mm -hmm. that's really important as an artist. Mm -hmm. And to have a lab like this and to use it, like to take them seriously when they said it's really a lab. And I feel like you took them up on it, you know, in your own way and said, all right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna explore. The word that comes up for me is vulnerability. And to, I think to be vulnerable in all spaces is tiring and takes courage, yeah. And so, thank you. Yeah. Um, Good job. I mean, that's our work, right, as artists, right. to be vulnerable. Exactly. Or to, or to somehow figure out how to invite our own vulnerability and, and other folks. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And what I personally feel for myself and constantly see is that we use our craft to hide ourselves. And so it's this thing of like, yeah, that's our work, and yet we're constantly hiding. At least I, I'll speak for myself that I, I am, I can. And so it was like, yeah, how do we end up using that same tool of the body and the same friend to be able to flip that on itself and instead of using it as a veil, to use it as a, um, to utilize it as, a, as an instrument for, for self-understanding. I appreciate what you're saying about the rub or the friction between honesty and craft. Mm -hmm. Because I think we start out being taught our craft as a vehicle to express ourselves. Mm -hmm. And yet when we get so craft focused, sometimes it can be a vehicle to hide. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where my work is. I'm really interested in craft, but craft as in frame, not necessarily like shape. Mm -hmm but the shape of a container, mm. the shape of a way in. I think this lab speaks to why it's important to have a multiplicity That's the answer of experience. This is a trial. So the answer is, I don't know all the answers, yeah? And we're gonna discover some of those answers by doing. I too saw a tipping point where it was like, there was a certain point of time that I don't think it was any particular thing that I did. Mm. Um, and maybe it wasn't a particular thing that you did, but I think it's it's like the practice, right? You just show up. Mm. I remember as a younger dancer, it's like, I can't figure out the day where it's like, oh, I understand right. this alignment between my knee and my pelvis, but it's just cumulative. It's like, I just stick with it, and then all of a sudden it's there, you know? Right. And I felt that with these students. I felt like, oh, today mm. they are more open, mm -hmm. you know, to this idea of, um, evidencing their own point of view through their improvisation. Mm -hmm. And again, I don't think it's because that day I said a magic word, but I think it's the, the, the dailiness, right? Yeah, exactly, of them having worked with you for a while, worked with me for a while. It just reminds me, honestly, seeing their growth reminds me to keep putting myself in new positions. This idea of being one track and kind of staying on that line and that'll make you the best mm. and that doing anything else will diminish what you're good at, mm -hmm. I disagree. Mm -hmm. And Dr. Jones would call it pluralism. You know what I mean? That, that if we take a pluralistic approach, actually the whole thing rises rather than, oh, one part diminishes mm. because you muddied the water with these other techniques. Mm -hmm. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Yeah, I think as far as the growth that I've seen, a challenge and a growth, um, this lab, is such a blessing and an offering to just exist and to be and be like, hey, well, now that we're here, what are we interested in? Can I really trust that I can just be? Can I really trust that you as 
a perceived leader, as a perceived teacher in this space, just trust me to do me. Mm. Um, and then they would leave. And so I would be like, yes. And then they would leave. And then there would be classes where that's a no. Mm. And so they're like, but wait, uh, it, uh. I feel like I just witnessed that rub, that tension mm. um, of really, I, I, I think about it as code switching um, mm. in a lot of ways. And I think about how our ancestors being enslaved and like needing to, to do the cakewalk for survival and then also made sure that they took that and remixed it into something that was making fun of who they had to do it for. Um, and so there's just this constant sense of um, code switching, but in a way that always feels sustainable to self and to sustainable to the joy mm. and the love that one wants to commit themselves to. And so I saw, I saw that growth. To have process archived, to have people get to see some of the seams, we need that. You know what I mean? That's part of the ecosystem. Alvin Ailey always said the most interesting works of art are those that are the most personal. And so it asks of you to open your heart and to walk naked into the world. Because at the end of the day, it's your voice, it's your work when you wear your heart on your sleeve.